Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mrs. Johnson. I'm going to read Getting to Know the World's Greatest Artist, written and illustrated by Mike Venenzia. This one is Norman Rockwell. Hey, Mr. Rockwell, why don't you paint some cool modern stuff like us? No, thanks. I like things just the way they are. Norman Rockwell was born in New York City in 1894. For more than 60 years, he painted familiar everyday scenes that people felt were part of their own lives. By the time he died in 1978, Norman Rockwell had become one of America's all-time favorite artists. Here is the triple self-portrait by Norman Rockwell, painted in 1960. Norman Rockwell's most famous pictures are illustrations he made for books, advertisements, and especially magazine covers. This one is called Time to Retire, Old Man with Shopping Basket. This one is called Something to be Thankful for, Pilgrim with a Gun. This one is called The Runaway. Illustrations are pictures that help tell story. Usually, book publishers or advertising agencies ask artists to do illustrations and then pay them for their work. This one is called Homecoming. During Norman Rockwell's time, important art critics didn't take illustrators seriously or consider their works to be fine art. This snobby attitude always disappointed Norman. He felt that great illustrations were every bit as important as great museum paintings. I didn't know Rockwell did fine art. This is, painting is a masterpiece. This painting speaks to me. To Norman Rockwell exhibit. Ah, uh, excuse me, folks. That's my drop cloth. Some of the first drawings Norman remembered making were scenes from books by Charles Dickens. On cold winter nights, when Norman was four or five years old, his father would read to the family around the dining room table. In the warm glow of a gas lamp, Norman would try his best to draw characters described in the books, like David Copperfield and Oliver Twist. Hold it, hold it right there. Could you read that page again? I didn't get the nose right. Come on, Norman. It's the tenth time. This is Norman Rockwell right here with his friend. They're holding frogs. Norman grew up in a pretty rough and tough neighborhood. He was lucky to be able to draw. It was about the only thing he was good at. Norman was always super skinny and terrible at sports. To make matters worse, his older brother Jarvis was the best athlete in the neighborhood. Without art, Norman felt kids would have just thought of him as a skinny, pigeon-toed, narrow-shouldered lump. Hey, that's my brother. Sorry, I thought I picked up a baseball bat. Norman knew he wanted to be an artist for as long as he could remember. When he was 16, he decided to leave high school and study art seriously. Norman went to, to several art schools in New York City, including the Art Students League. This school was started by one of Norman's favorite art heroes, Howard Pyle. Norman thought Howard Pyle was one of the greatest illustrators ever. He loved the detail Pyle used in his works. Howard Pyle's drawings seem so real, they give you the feeling that Pyle might have been right there drawing during an adventure with pirates or King Arthur and his knights. This is an illustration by Howard Pyle called Two Knights Do Battle Before Camillard. This one is also by Howard Pyle called The Flying Dutchman. And here is The Coming of Lancaster by Howard Pyle, his hero. Norman admired other illustrators, too. He was influenced by Frederick Remel Remington, the smoke signal by him, Charles Dana Gibson, couple on the deck right here, and C.J. Liondecker. This one's by Liondecker called Thanksgiving Pilgrim and Football Player. These artists worked during a time in art history known as the Golden Age of Illustration. They had a way of bringing the characters in a story to life and making you feel part of the adventure. Norman Rockwell dreamed of being able to do the same thing someday. Norman also enjoyed the work of great master artists from the past. New York City had plenty of art museums where Norman could go and see paintings by Rembrandt, self-portrait, Jan Vermeer, young woman with a water jug, and Peter Bruegel, the harvesters. It's easy to see the effect these, had great, these great artists had on some Norman's paintings. The little painting the little house is one of Norman's Rockwells. 
Norman Rockwell was also influenced by his memories of family summer trips. Each year, the Rockwells spent a few weeks in the country. Norman loved playing in the fresh, clean air and wide open spaces. He especially enjoyed the friendly people he met. Doctor and Doll by Norman Rockwell. Norman was much happier there than in the overcrowded, dirty, and unfriendly city. Early on, Norman Rockwell decided his artwork would show life only as he would like it to be. Freedom from Want Teachers at the Art Students League liked Norman. They saw he had talent and was one of the hardest workers there. One teacher helped Norman get his first big art job. It was doing illustrations for a children's book called Tell Me Why Stories. With the money he made, Norman rented the studio. He got more jobs right away. The editor of Boy's Life magazine asked him to do some drawings for a camping handbook. The editor liked the illustrations so much that he offered Norman a job as the art director of Boy's Life. At the age of 19, Norman Rockwell had the important job of making illustrations, illustrations and deciding how the entire magazine should look. Here's an illustration for the Tell Me Why stories. Here is the camp book. It's not all scouting. It's not all of scouting to scout. And this one is the hike book. I'd give my other leg to belong to your troop. Norman Rockwell's dream of becoming a top illustrator was becoming true. He was a hard worker and was busy all the time drawing and painting pictures for ads, books, and magazines. Norman had one dream, though. It was so big, he was almost afraid to try for it. That dream was to illustrate a front cover for the Saturday Evening Post. The Post was the most popular magazine in the United States. It was started in 1728 by Benjamin Franklin. Only the best artists were asked to illustrate post covers. The post cover on the next page was done by J.C. Leyendecker, one of Norman's favorite artists. It's called Baby New Year. Baby New Year Year. Fortunately, Norman shared a studio at this time with an artist friend who encouraged him to show his work to the Post magazine people. After months of putting it off, Norman gathered up his courage and a few illustration samples and went to the magazine office. He thought he'd never sell his work and was so nervous he was soaked with sweat. But on that day, Norman Rockwell got the surprise of his life. The editor at the Post loved Norman's work. I like your work, Rockwell. By the way, I didn't know it was supposed to rain today. Norman's first post cover showed two boys making fun of a third boy who has been forced to babysit and can't play. Norman ended up doing more than 300 covers for the Saturday Evening Post. Boy Pushing Baby Carriage. Most of Norman's illustrations show his sense of humor and love of people, like this one, Boy on the High Dive. One thing that makes Norman Rockwell's illustrations so wonderful is the way they tell a story without words. Norman had a way of designing his pictures so that everything he shows draws your attention to the main idea. This one's called Breaking Home Ties, Boy and Father Sitting on Truck. This one is The Homecoming. This one's Coming and Going, Going and Coming. Norman was very careful to make sure all the details that went into his illustrations were as authentic as possible. From the little girl's bubblegum to the well-worn curtains and floor tiles in the restaurant, Norman filled his paintings with tons of familiar and interesting objects. It's fun to keep looking at his pictures over and over again to see if you've missed anything. This one's called Saving, Saying Grace. Norman Rockwell could draw people and objects as well as any great artist. He used his special talent along with an original sense of humor to show that people all over the world were were really pretty good. This one is called Rosie the Riveter. Works of art in this book can be seen at the following places. Ammon Carter Museum in Fort Worth, Texas. Delaware Museum of Art in Wilmington, Delaware. Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, New York. And the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The end.